Automotive industry in Nigeria dates back to the 1950s and consists of the production of passenger cars and commercial trucks. Early production was led by United Africa Company's Federated Motors Industries assembly line of Bedford TJ trucks and SCOA's production of Peugeot 404 pickup trucks. Significant development began in the 1970s. During a period of oil boom, the federal government of Nigeria signed joint venture partnerships with foreign car manufacturers to assemble vehicles and provide technical assistance towards vertical integration within the local industry. These foreign brands dominated the industry from the middle of the 1970s to the end of the 1980s. The passenger vehicles brands were Peugeot Nigeria Limited and Volkswagen. The commercial vehicles manufacturers, Leyland, Anambra Motor Manufacturing, and Stair competed with Bedford Truck for dominance. The companies simply assembled kits and completely knocked down parts imported from abroad. In the marketplace, demand was largely dictated by the government's budgetary concerns. Towards the end of the 1980s, a downturn in the economy, mixed with government's inconsistency and the higher cost of locally manufactured cars compared to imported counterparts negatively affected the industry. By 2000, used foreign cars dominated car sales in the country, also the rise in imports of affordable used cars negatively impacted the development of a vertically integrated industry. Recently, a local brand, Innocent has opened an assembly plant in the country. Some of the plants had been privatized, Vaughan was sold to Stallion Group and Leyland was sold to Busan. Production has been scaled down from the heights of the 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> Topic. History Before the Nigerian Civil War, automobile production was in the form of assemblage of partially knocked down bits. Federated Motor Industries, a branch of UAC produced Bedford TJ trucks and SCOA's assembled Peugeot 404 pickup trucks. The cab, chassis, axles and wheels were imported separately to reduce the total landing cost of importation. In 1969, hoping to promote technology transfer, industrialization and reap gains from backward integration, the Nigerian government published a request for proposal for automotive assembly plants. About 20 car manufacturers responded but ultimately selection was influenced by the demand of the brands in Nigeria. To set up passenger vehicles assembly plants, the country went into negotiations with Peugeot of France and Volkswagen AG of Germany. The government also had in mind a medium term outlook of the provision of technical assistance to develop local content inputs with the intention that by 1990, the vehicles manufactured will have 100% input sourced locally. Negotiations also were initiated with Stair of Austria, Leyland of Great Britain, Daimler-Benz of Germany and Fiat of Italy. The government initiated moves to protect the local industry by increasing customs duties on fully built cars and trucks shipped into the country. <laughs> <laughs> Passenger cars In 1972, the government signed a contract with popular brand Volkswagen of Germany to establish an assembly plant in the country. Equity interest was divided as, Volkswagen AG 40%, German financial institutions 11%, Nigerian government 35%, Lagos State 4%, and Nigerian distributors 10%. The plant was situated along the newly constructed Lagos Badagri Expressway and production began in 1975. The cars were assembled from completely knocked down parts imported from Germany and supplied by Volkswagen. The plant produced the Beetle 1300 cc, 1500 cc, 1600 cc, Audi 100 Audi 100 Candelas, Golf, Combi Bus, Jetta and Passat. The company's vehicle was popular among the middle class in the country. The other major passenger vehicle manufacturer is Peugeot Automobile of Nigeria also known as PAN. Like Volkswagen, PAN began production in 1975 with inputs shipped in bits and pieces from abroad. 
The equity distribution was Peugeot Citroën 40%, Nigerian government 35%, Kaduna State 10%, and Nigerian Industrial Development Bank 5%. At onset, the cars were priced affordably and it became a popular car among the middle class. Production rose from 2,259 in 1975 to 35,000 in 1979 to 48,235 in 1980. The company started with the 504 model and later introduced the 505 in 1980. But when the economy went through a downturn, partly caused by drop in oil prices, newly introduced fiscal policy such as foreign exchange and import controls made it hard for manufacturers to source foreign currency making the cost of production rise. PAN still maintains a production line assembling car but at a reduced rate from its peak. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Commercial trucks. In the 1970s, the Nigerian government signed agreements with four foreign manufacturers to invest in assembly plants within the country. One of the agreements birthed Anambra Auto Manufacturing Company also known as ANAMCO, a partnership between the Nigerian federal government and Daimler-Benz for the production of trucks. The assembly plant located in Anugu started production in 1980. The company produced MB trucks, ambulances and refuse disposal trucks with an annual capacity of 7,500. Another project was Leyland Nigeria Limited, a joint venture with Leyland of UK. The plant is located in Ibadan and at its height it produced trucks and vans for the military, customs, police and the general populace. The Leyland plant also had the ability to produce four-wheel drive vehicles. The plant assembled a mixture of five vehicles including the Mitsubishi Cantor, Land Rover, Range Rover, the Landmaster and the Albion. Decline Recession and high production costs Commercial vehicle manufacturers wanted government protection from importation to ensure a vibrant car market that will be worthy of sustained investment and able to assist in developing a local supplier industry and meeting the local content's target. However, by 1981, reduction in crude oil prices from the heights of the 1970s led to foreign exchange and import controls and rationing that negatively impacted car production and causing production delays. The assembly plants were capital intensive and depended on importation of parts from abroad but the demand for knockdown parts placed strain on foreign currency market. The government was not generous in providing import licenses to the companies and sometimes shipments were delayed at the ports until proper licenses were obtained. By 1985, all the commercial truck plants were producing below 30% of their capacity and sustaining losses. Towards the end of the 1980s, the government initiated market liberalization measures and allowed more imported cards to compete with locally made vehicles. Volkswagen and PAN increased the cost of their vehicles as a result of a depreciating Naira and reduced government subsidy. Volkswagen shifted market focus on selling combi buses for commercial transport and corporate cars. The plants were capital intensive and barely generated profits. Equity partners like the government were happy that the plant was running, and for the foreign manufacturers, profits came largely from the supply of CKD. Eight years after the plants were opened, the local content target was never met, and the plants still imported bits and pieces from abroad. Lack of collaboration between manufacturers and local distributors made difficult the production of parts to meet the manufacturer's specifications and lifespan of parts. Infrastructural deficits such as unstable electric supply increased the cost of producing vehicles and car parts, this made the local produce more expensive than its imported counterparts. Importation of fully built vehicles also rose during this period, affecting the demand of locally assembled cars. Volkswagen went from an annual production of 29,300 in 1981 to less than 1,000 in 1989, and in 2005, Nigerian government sold its equity interest to Stallion Group. Facilities at the plant were later used to manufacture Ashok Leyland Falcon buses. Um, 
Topic: <laughs> Slow patronage from government. As soon as production began, demand for vehicles and trucks was heavily influenced by government spending. During a budgetary period, if the government did not patronize the manufacturers, production plans will be negatively affected. The worst affected by government inconsistency and drop in oil prices were the commercial vehicle plants. While market demand was 36,000 in 1977 by 1981 it had declined to 14,440. Leyland's production was greatly influenced by government spending. Each year, the company followed expenditure plans of customs, police and military to create a demand-influenced production plan. It also depended on Leyland of UK for bits and pieces for production. But sometimes, government agencies began importing their own vans, this made Leyland scale down its operations and in addition, the manufacturer stopped sending bits and pieces when production was scaled down and government officials came abroad to negotiate purchase in Leyland UK instead of the local manufacturer. <laughs> 2010s Since the beginning of democratic governance in 1999, the government has been selling its equity stake in the assembly plants. Volkswagen was sold to the Stallion Group, PAN's stake was bought by ASD Motors. PAN, Stallion and local brand Innocent are the major local assembly plants in the country but Stallion mostly assembles partially knocked down parts. Innocent was commissioned in 2010 with an installed capacity of 10,000 vehicles a year. In 2015, the planned production target was 6,000 vehicles. In 2009, PAN started a new production line switching from 406 to 307 models. <laughs> 